Hey, my name's Helen and you're listening to the Love Mondays Club podcast. If you're a fellow tutor, trainer or coach, then welcome. You're in the right place. Whether you're looking to start, grow or expand your online services, this podcast is for you. My goal is to help you build your business, earn more money and have more fun in this messy muddle we call entrepreneurship. Every Monday, I'm going to be sharing practical tips to help you accelerate your business. From marketing to mindset to money, we'll cover it all. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Love Mondays Club podcast. So today I am joined by another exciting guest, Charlie Alexander, who is a photographer from Colchester. We're going to be talking all about photography, branding and also money mindset, which is an issue close to lots of our hearts listening to this podcast at the moment. So Charlie, welcome to the Love Mondays Club podcast. Hello. It's lovely to have you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous, but thank you for having me. I'm really chuffed to be here. Amazing. Don't worry. It's going to be a doddle, I promise. So why don't you start by just telling us all a little bit about yourself, um, how you got into photography, what it is that you're doing at the moment with your business? I've always been in the arts. I did a dance degree, actually. I worked for arts organisations when I graduated and I did some kind of project management and that's sort of how I Initially, I used to work with photographers and then I did that kind of standard thing that a lot of people do. I I pivoted when I had children. So I I took a break on my first baby. I did a night class on photography, got a proper camera and then just really slowly built it. Three babies later, I had a business. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. And it's I'm, I'm a portrait photographer and I specialise in weddings, newborns, families and branding. Amazing. That's great. Which of those would you say you kind of spend the most time doing photography wise? Uh, weddings, for sure. It's about 50% of the business and then everything else makes up the other half. So what about from a branding photography point of view? Do you feel like, is that something that's growing? Are lots more people getting branding photography done for their businesses? Yeah, I do. I think that it's supposed to be the fastest growing genre of photography in the UK. Ever since lockdown, people obviously became more aware that they need to get their businesses online. They are investing more in in getting proper photography of themselves, of their business, of what they do. And I think it's expanding beyond people that are just self-employed now. I think people, you know, even if just within companies, they want good brand, branding photos for their LinkedIn, for their other socials, especially if people work for like large companies, they're not necessarily satisfied when you get one photographer come in to do 100 people in a day. So it's really growing really fast. Yeah, which is exciting. And I, I, I love it. It's, it's part of the business I love. I can totally understand that about people and companies. Like I remember my old business and it's like, you know, they take that photo of you on your first day when you're looking like absolutely terrified and all kind of awkwardly dressed up for your first day at work. And then that picture haunts you for the rest of your, your career within that company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's t- terrible. <laughs> Totally understand why people want more professional photos. So this this is a really interesting topic because I think that like with lots of the people who who I work with and helping them like grow their online businesses, I'm always beating the drum about you know having good branding and having good photography. And I think for lots of people, what really holds them back sometimes is confidence, is that sort of camera confidence and getting in front of the camera. But also as well, I think lots of people think that it's something that's very expensive, maybe something that you only do you know when your business is really boomed and growing so like in your experience what would you say is like one of the things that holds people back the most is it the confidence is it money is it a bit of both I think it's kind of both in a sense of I I think it's like a worthiness issue I think if people aren't fully valuing their business their time spent on their business then they don't believe in investment into that and into themselves it becomes something they don't necessarily want to take a leap in. They don't see what they're putting into their business as, as investable. Sometimes I think if there's a lot of, with women, if we're doing something as a side hustle or something alongside raising children, then, and the income's extra, it's that kind of emphasis that we put on our time that it's extra or additional. It has kind of a cyclical effect where if we don't invest in our business, then we're not taking it all that seriously. So we don't want to 
we don't get a lot back and then we don't like I think like you say it's that whole thing that a lot of people when we first get started feel like their business is like a bit of a hobby and I think as well that so many people though when you talk to them they they know the potentials there they know that there's so much they can do with it but it is that that leap of faith and and like you say it's it's the investment as well because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a cliche statement but sometimes you do have to spend money to make money <laughs> and that is a scary thing you know investing in your business you always have to spend money to make money I I really do like, yeah, and and professional investment as well. I think we can easily think, oh, well, that could be replaced with a really nice selfie that I took or this nice picture that my other half took on holiday. And it's apples and pears. They're completely different things. If you're looking for professional photography of you in a professional capacity is a totally different thing and and, and it's so beneficial, it's so useful. 100%. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of like dipping into this idea, aren't we, here of like money mindset and things like that, which I know is something that you're like very passionate about. So for me, I mean, when I first started my business, I had no idea about this idea of money mindset. I'd never heard of the kind of term or phrase before. And yet I think as you kind of delve into the online world and online business, it starts to become like more and more apparent. I started noticing it everywhere. So would you would you mind telling us at first, like what is money mindset? What does that mean? What's it referring to? Oh, I don't know, like proper uh, definitions of for me. <laughs> sort of how I, what I believe about money in terms of asking for it, what it means to me in my life and how I value it in exchange for my time. So I think in terms of money mindset, it's about how do you feel when you are faced with a situation where you have to talk about money or ask for money or you're being given money? It can be a really emotional and complex thing to kind of unpick. So do you feel do you feel lucky when you get an order or or a booking or something like that? And how lucky should you feel like if you're just very good at what you do or if your product is is beautiful or whatever should we feel you know very lucky or should we feel like job well done that's good you know or do we feel when someone asks well how much will that be does that kick up any kind of feelings about guilt like do you feel do you feel bad or, or what's what's the minimum I can ask for for this because I want to show this person that I'm going to work to death on this project for them or do, uh, that it isn't a transaction of, of of energy you know your money that you've earned doing your thing for what I'm going to do here for you and it brings up a lot of stuff for a lot of people I think definitely and I think like one one word you use there lucky is a really interesting one like I don't know about you but I actually don't like the word lucky I think it's very unfair and I think that it like I think that it doesn't, you know, when, when people say that they're lucky or, or if, you know, if anyone ever says to me, or oh, you're very lucky, I think, hmm, am I lucky or, or do I work really hard? <laughs> is this all a coincidence you know of luck I think this is so true and this thing I say to my clients all the time you know like you again we're going over all the all the cliche phrases here today but you do make your own luck with these things you know people who have these big online businesses and seemingly you know very successful like it's not luck it's very much the hard work and time and effort they've put in and definitely a lot of mindset barriers that they have probably had to overcome themselves as well completely I mean like I'm not going to, like, I set my business up from a point of privilege, you know, the situation that I set it up in, who I am in the world. I do have a lot of points of privilege. So I think that counts as some luck. But then also, yeah, there's a lot of hard work here. And and it's just about that comfort, about talking about money. I think politeness comes, you know, I think like a culture, I think if you're like raised around the 80s (laughs) as a girl, then you were probably taught to be really nice and really polite and make everyone happy and accommodate everybody's feelings. And I think then when you go and become a businesswoman, that is quite jarring when you're given situations to talk about money and ask for money and say, this is this much. And I thought, you know, I used to find myself kind of preempting people's reactions and opinions. And so I think it's a really interesting topic for women, especially in business definitely yeah and yeah this this is something I, I definitely talk to my clients a lot about and and sort of like we we often use like templates and things like that and I always say to people you know one of the things I see lots of lots of people do lots of women do is they 
they tell them the price and then instantly follow it up with, is that okay? Like almost asking permission for it. I was saying to one of my clients the other day, I said, you know, when I, I, rem- I still, it's funny, these little points in your business, I still remember putting my prices up at one point back in the day when I was tutoring and feeling so scared and nervous about it and worried what people were going to say. And I remember being on the phone to the customers and like I made a point to myself, I actually wrote it on a piece of paper of like, do not ask permission just tell people what the difference is. And I would I would say it to them on the phone and then I would like hold the phone away and cringe to myself, like like literally physically cringe. Like, oh God, what are they going to say? And do you know what? Nine, like 99% of them didn't bat an eyelid. They were just like, okay, no problem. When's it going to happen? <laughs> yeah, no. Oh my God. I, I Similar, but I think sometimes with photography, I would, when I started out, I would give a price and it's usually over email for me. And then literally an essay about what is going to go into that project, how much work it's going to be like hours and hours, you know, it's going to be this and to me, the travel and it's going to be the, the, you know, the planning and the post-production, the editing and all the software for the, you know, and just almost like saying to them, don't worry. (laughs) I am barely going to earn any money from this, you know, like to kind of over justify, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a kind of martyrdom with it or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, similar. Like, is that, yeah, is that okay? Or like, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. Or the almost apologizing thing. But I don't know about you, though. I, I actually think this is a this is a really interesting conversation I was having with someone recently about sort of money mindset and things. And like how I think, again, kind of going back to what we said in the beginning, how our attitudes, I think, do definitely change a lot. The longer we're self-employed, I do think the more we value kind of time and money and how much things cost and how long things take. And I think sometimes having that kind of like detailed, like like you're sort of saying, it's, it's, a, it's a funny one because you have that detailed breakdown of like all the things you're going to do and all the things that go into it. And in some ways it feels like, you're, like you say, you're, you're trying to almost prove to them how much you're, you're over delivering for them. But at the same time, I do still think there's some value in that, in showing people actually really what goes on behind the scenes and like, you know, how, how much effort and work goes into services that we provide yeah no there there is definitely a level where we need to educate our clients I certainly do say like with the branding for example to try and educate them about what they're going to use these images for how it's going to benefit their business what's going to go into them how these are different from their holiday pictures or that selfie at sunset that's not necessarily appropriate for the purposes. So yeah, definitely educating our clients, but also allowing yourself to just give the price and leave that there and don't say, is that okay? Or an essay of what's going to go into it. Because the price is also, and that's, yeah, that takes, uh, I think that definitely takes experience is just to give the price and leave it there. And it's, it's, I think it's as well, it's that there's a real skill in being comfortable with silence. Like I think especially if you're speaking like on the phone or, or um, you know, on video or anything on Zoom, you might be speaking to people. Yeah, back in the day, I, I did sort of qualifications in like counselling skills. And I remember, especially from having a teaching background, like I'm used to nonstop talking. Like th- this is why the podcast was, was the dream for me, you know, sitting here just chatting all day. But doing this counselling, you know, they said like, Helen, you have to be quiet. You have to an- ask a question and just sit there and be quiet and god did i struggle with it but actually i found it really helped me with the money conversations and you know i think on the outside i look calm in my head i'm counting down from 10 and like you know <laughs> tapping my fingers together <laughs> but it's but it is it's, it's giving people a chance to kind of like just process and say yes to things and agree to things my parents are both self employed so I remember my dad saying that he did some sales training once and it was what after you give the price and then if you're negotiating, the next person to talk will be the one who loses. It's like you hold, I mean, this is a very kind of a, a like very salesy technique, but yeah, apparently it is. So you just need to just give what it is. Because it is what it is. I'm certainly not earning millions here. I have a very clear business plan. I have, I know what goes into a shoot. I'm very comfortable with the value that I'm offering people for their money and and the benefits and the expertise that goes into it. So really the price is the price. It's definitely scary just to give that to people and allow them to have their reaction to it. Yeah. 
A hundred percent. And I think as well, like just just this little activity, like e- even if it's not something that you share with other people, I think genuinely just sitting down, you know, if you're a service based business and just listing out everything that goes into that one service that you offer like that right there, I think, is a really empowering activity to to help you feel more comfortable with your price. And, you know, the just just not even your expertise, but also like the day to day stuff that you're doing to put into that service is really helpful. I listened to a, a money expert, like a business money expert, and they, they were saying, you know, whatever you earn, like for me as kind of a service based business, like so there's no product. So there's, you know, it's not like I'm not working on a markup from a product, so to speak. But from what I'm asking for, whatever the price is, you need to put basically a third is taxes, a third is kind of investment into the business. You're only getting a third of that is your income for that time as well. So when you break that up to whatever hours have gone into it, you know, the hours of Instagram and Pinterest and emails that have gone into the marketing to get the lead and then the time that's gone into the call and the planning and then the travel and then all the equipment and everything that's going to come afterwards. Yeah, you definitely need all that information especially when you're self-employed because because we work flexibly don't we I mean most people are are self-employed because they think well I can just do it my own time I do it my own time but you can find yourself working 18 hour days and (laughs) for like 4p a minute or 4p an hour you know because you're just like no I just do all the things and and then uh, it's fine this is fine I'm gonna earn 20 quid today (laughs) it's that knowing all your costs and expenses and having all of that into a business plan or some kind of strategy that does set the longevity of your business because we can all work like dogs we can uh, you know and, and and do everything ourselves and cram it all in and Oh, don't worry about that. I'll just do that myself. I'll just do that myself. But businesses don't last because people don't last like that. And that's no way to live. 100%. And and I think as well, sort of going back to what you were saying there, like it's, it's, you're so right. And it's so interesting about that idea of like looking at it in sort of thirds in your business. Because I think that's also a really kind of interesting mindset shift when you do first get started in your own business is this idea of like the money coming into your bank account isn't actually all yours and you know we're so used to it when you've you know come off a payroll and things like that you know like everything that goes in is yours to spend with do as you please and you've got your bills and things like that but like suddenly managing money when you start your own business is really difficult and like nobody teaches you how to do it when you get started I think it is very much like trial and error and panic around tax year ending in two days time (laughs) things like that you kind of learn the hard way unfortunately yeah well that I mean if you're not investing in an accountant and you're going to do the two-week panic before tax return season that's two weeks that you just worked and seemingly you haven't you know you probably haven't done anything else if you've left the whole year's worth to the last two weeks so what earnings have you lost there and 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 then I can get into outsourcing as a whole as a whole thing but yeah your your time is an expense and and everything else is as well I totally agree. And I mean, in in this sort of situation where, you know, maybe we do have that sort of over politeness about money and we feel really resistant to talking about it and it feels like an icky subject. Like you say, I think that does really spill over for a lot of us into into our businesses and for lots of people, right? It stops them, like you like we were sort of saying earlier, it stops them from investing in themselves and, and their businesses and like because that's what it is ultimately, isn't it? When you invest in we like to say invest in your business, but really when we are the service provider, we're investing in ourselves. And that in itself is quite a big leap of faith to, you know, put cold, hard money that we've earned on the table. We are, we're accountable for it. Like we're accountable for the success of it. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And and there's that sort of not wanting to put a value on our time and our money and therefore not our business. So then it's not worth investing in to us. I really love uh, Catelyn Moran. I love her. And I had a whole... <laughs> kind of come to Jesus moment when I read her first book that how to be a woman and and in there she was like a good marker of if something is maybe a gender bias is just like are the men worried about this and I think it is quite a female thing to worry about am I worth this investment is my business worth it or or should I just do it all myself and I would just encourage people just to women especially just to take that leap in investing in 
their businesses in, in whatever way you feel like it needs. Like invest firstly time. So like take the time out from doing the thing it is that your business does and make a business plan, make a strategy, set all that up. Because once you have things like that in writing, so much comes a lot more easily, like asking for the money, like saying, no, it's fine that this costs this because I know where this project or transaction sits within a bigger picture. And then you can get a sense of where where you would need outsourcing and where where time's going that perhaps isn't spent because there's an awful lot of outsourcing that you can invest in that doesn't actually cost you money once you figure out how much of your time's going into doing it yourself like the websites I built my first website myself and I know for a fact in fact I think I built my first two websites and I know for a fact that they took me weeks weeks and weeks and weeks and what what could I have earned if I'd gone oh actually this you know this six weeks that I'm gonna spend on a website I'm gonna take more photos like I definitely would have been quits in definitely exactly and th- that's the thing isn't it like this this is this whole thing about like outsourcing and investing is like the idea is you know okay you're you're paying somebody for like 10 hours let's say like so one of my recent interviews was a virtual assistant and we were talking about this you know like you're paying for like 10 hours for them to help you but then that's 10 hours you're getting back into your business and you know all that potential that you have of free time to go and do stuff and, and earn more and build the business and grow it is you know it's you can't put a price on it and then as well i i can talk to my va for a cup for like 20 minutes about what i want her to do and she'll be like okay so i just do this this and this and this and i'm like okay how long is that gonna take you and she'll be like oh an hour i'm like geez that would take me i mean i'd have to sit around and think about doing it for a week first and then I would have to get really stressed about thinking about doing it and then I might do it. And then when I did do it, it would take me eight times longer than her. Like, I think as well, like we don't have, I think in like pop culture and that there's, we don't have a lot of positive images about money and wealth. So when we think about earning money or taking money off, you know, it's got so many negative connotations, like just how we see like you know, rich people or, or wealth or, or, or and there's that kind of British salt of the earth storyline that we all want to kind of, you know, or, you know, work so hard, work so hard. Work. Yes, it's great to work hard and I, I work very hard, but it's also good to work smart and it's also good to work to your skill set and it's good to work to what you're really good at. And it's it's also good to have enough money to pay your bills and go on holiday once or twice a year you well, know exactly yeah exactly that is <laughs> yes. I mean look I think for so many of us that is why we start our own businesses isn't it is to have that freedom and I think especially when you go from employment to starting your own business you yeah you dream of the freedom and all the kind of holidays and all that kind of time you'll have but I think for lots of people in reality they actually sometimes go the extreme opposite way and and kind of find themselves stuck in a seven days a week situation and and nine times out of ten it's just simply because like we've talked about today they're not charging enough money and so like to make the bills and everything else they're having to work these ridiculous hours when actually a couple of simple shifts in in money mindset and their pricing and the way they offer to work with people could literally transform their business and their lives and it's so much easier to set those boundaries and get strategic and smart when you're earning enough like when you're not and you're 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 doing it all yourself and 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 you're you're not earning enough so you think I'm just going to work more and then surely I will end up earning enough somehow it's really hard to put those things in place but you can when you have the the capacity for it 100% so what would you what sort of tips would you give to somebody who I mean let's let's talk about it from like your context of like branding photographs so there's probably lots of people listening who are thinking you know I know my business would really benefit from like having lots of professional images but I just feel a bit resistant I'm not sure if it's right for me like what would you say to them about that about having branding yeah, about that sort of investment. What what is what is it going to do for them? In terms of looking at branding photography as an asset to your business, it's it's your shop front now. You know, you wouldn't have dirty shop windows and your worst products in the window and a crappy old sign above the door of your shop front. You would have the best products and a clean, shiny window and a gorgeous on brand sign. And that's for most businesses, even businesses that do have a shop front, 
your imagery that's out there on your website, on your socials, on LinkedIn, in the world is your shop front. So it's so important for it to be professional and on brand and that you're going to work with a creator. You're going to work with a photographer who's going to get to know you and your message and your brand and what you're trying to say and what you're trying to do and and what you're trying to communicate. And I just think that's really, really valuable. And there is a range within photographers. So yes, everybody has a budget. I would recommend using a photographer who you can discuss budget with. So if you've only got, say, a couple of hundred pounds, we can talk about, okay, well, what's your first priority? And we'll start building a bank of images for now. And then I would recommend, rather than trying to go in with a photographer and be like, I want all my products, all my services, and me in 65 outfits shot, and for it to last me for the next 10 years. It's better to go in with a small project of what you're working on now and where you are now and, and build and just factor in photography as a regular expense. By regular, it could be like bi-monthly or every six months. And you top up that image bank and because that image bank that you build is a, is a huge business asset to promote everything you are and everything that you do. Um, and it's there with you forever. 100% agree. 100% agree. So for our final thoughts, because again, I think we could sit here chatting about this all day, but unfortunately we have come towards the end. So obviously we've talked a lot about, you know, like money mindset and branding and why like investing in your business is so like such a powerful, important thing that we need to do for ourselves. Um, so yourself as a business owner running your own business, what would be your number one piece of advice for new entrepreneurs who are sort of just starting out or thinking about growing, scaling their businesses online? I would strongly suggest networking and leaning into your small business community finding your peers as well I think when people start in business they think that they shouldn't interact and socialize with their competitors I think the best thing I've ever done was to really start building really big strong lovely friendships with my peers my competitors and that is my community that is my water bottle chat What's bottle of water? What is that you say? <laughs> I, would, um, I don't know. No, no, like, like by the water tank. I know what you mean. My mind's got blank. Yeah, the mind is too. Water tower. <laughs> so that's big and uh, bouncing off and being humble and asking for advice or just sharing the vulnerable parts of your early journey. I would recommend not waiting to feel ready for anything because just don't just give it all a go just try it and don't take anything too seriously don't try and be perfect or ready just give it a bash and for me staying creative is is really big i know that doesn't apply to all businesses but i'm i make time to do photography projects for myself i'm doing a self-portrait project at the moment and just something that keeps me in love with what i was in love with doing when i first started which is taking nice photos no amazing i love that i I really really love that thing at the end there about time for yourself and creativity because again like we say how 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 easy is it when you run your own business to just get lost in the kind of hustle bustle and all the different hats that you're you're wearing and sometimes yeah almost start to kind of maybe lose a little bit of when you first started and that kind of passion you had for it so yeah that's beautiful I really love that okay so Charlie if anybody wants to find you on social media where are the best places for them to go please I am very much on Instagram too much (laughs) Um, and you can find me at farley f-a-r-l-i-e underscore photography and you can also find me at the hook which is at the hook underscore and that's a separate business but we 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 also provide some networking and, and business advice and branding and things over there but those are the best places to find me perfect and i'll put all those links in the show notes one thing i would say as well if you are essex based listening to the podcast i highly highly recommend going to the hook networking events so that's how charlie and i met i've gone to them recently and i think they are the best networking events i've been to in essex why travel all literally across the county to come up and see you guys (laughs) 
highly, highly recommend going and checking them out if you are based at Essex. Thank you. No, and thank you, Helen, for having me and, and yeah, coming and engaging with the hook. It's, yeah, brilliant. I've loved this. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Love Mondays Club podcast. Don't forget to review and subscribe or share this episode with one of your business friends. For more information and support from today's episode, head over to the show notes at lovemondaysclub.co.uk. Have a great week and I'll see you next Monday.